Welcome back to LabRite Scientific. In this episode, I want to talk about friction, specifically friction of a wheeled cart. Now, I use a lot of these home-built wooden carts for a lot of my experiments here at LabRite. And it'd be good to know the dynamic and static friction associated with each one so I can compensate for that during my experiments. Before I get started, let's go to the whiteboard and look at some theory. So let's talk about some of the basic theory behind friction. Now on my board I have a diagram showing a surface. It could be smooth like ice or rough like asphalt or even gravel. And on that surface is an object. And that object has a certain amount of weight and that weight is acting downward through the surface. Now what do I want to do is I want to pull or push on that object to get it moving. When I do that, a frictional force will be created which opposes the motion of the object. Now the equation that governs friction is relatively simple. It's simply the frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times a normal force. Now since my surface in this case is horizontal, the normal force acting through the surface is actually going to be the weight. So N in my case equals W. Now there are two types of friction I need to consider. One being static and the other being dynamic. Now the static friction is when I first start trying to get the object to move. There's a certain amount of surface adhesion between the object and the surface. And it takes a little more force to break that adhesion to get the object moving. Now when the object starts moving, it sort of skips across the surface and takes less force to keep the object moving, and that's the dynamic friction. Now, the same equation is used for both static and dynamic friction. The only difference is I either use a coefficient of static friction, denoted by an S, or a coefficient of dynamic friction, denoted by a D. And depending on the experimental setup, determines whether you're determining the static friction or the dynamic friction. So let's go and look at the cart and see where the frictional forces are coming from. Here's my cart. Now the friction is coming from a couple different sources. First of all, there's the interaction between the wheels and the surface. Now you might think that that's frictionless, but that's not true. As an example, back in the early 1800s, when you're developing railroads, a horse was capable of pulling one ton of cargo in a wagon on a gravel road. Now someone determined that if I put that cart onto iron rails, that same horse could pull seven or eight tons. And that was due to the reduced friction between the wheels and the iron rails. Now today, you're actually told to make sure your car tires are inflated properly to increase fuel efficiency. And that's done to reduce the friction between the tires and the road. So there is indeed friction between the wheels and the surface. Now the other source of friction is the interaction between my axles and the wooden frame of the cart. And that's occurring at four points. Now I've actually added graphite lubrication to my axle points to try to reduce that friction, but it's impossible to reduce it altogether. So primarily I'm dealing with the friction between the wheels and the surface and the friction of my axles in the cart frame. Here's my test setup. Here's my test article, the cart. That's attached to a toe string, which that toe string passes over a homemade pulley system, which is here, and the string goes down to a cup where I can put my weights in to apply the force to the test article. Now I'm ready to try to determine the force needed to break the static friction of my cart. I'm going to use my trusted pennies as my little force increments. I'm going to add them to the cup one at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there it took six pennies to break the static friction of the cart. Now in other tests, it took five, it's taken seven. So on average, about six pennies of force needed to break the static friction. Now let's determine the force that's needed to compensate for the dynamic friction of the cart. I'm going to add one penny at a time to my cup, and I'm going to give a small impulse to the cart. If the cart stops moving, then I need more force. If the cart continues to roll all the way to the stops, 
and that's roughly the force needed to overcome the dynamic friction. If there's one penny, small impulse, cart stops. Two pennies, small impulse, cart stops. Three pennies, small impulse, cart stops. Four pennies, small impulse, cart moves all the way to the stop. So that tells me the force I needed to overcome the dynamic friction, and that was four pennies. Okay, now that my experiments are done, we can crunch some of the numbers. Before I begin, let me remind you of the equation for frictional forces. The frictional force is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. Now, I ultimately want to know the coefficient of friction for my carts. So I'm going to use some basic algebra to rearrange that equation and do that simply by dividing each side of the equation by the normal force, n. So what I get is the coefficient of friction is equal to the frictional force divided by the normal force. Now the units on each of those forces is newtons. And if I divide newton by newton, I get a unitless parameter. And that is indeed correct because my coefficient needs to be a unitless number. So that's good. The equation works out. The unit analysis tells me it's correct. So now the cart has a mass of 400 grams. Now that represents the force coming down through the surface I'm testing. Now, that 400 grams equates to 0.4 kilograms. What I want is that normal force to be in newtons. So if I multiply the mass of the cart times acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, I can get the weight of the cart. And that's equal to 3.9 newtons. So that is my N. Now in the experiments, I measured the force needed to break the static friction and the force needed to overcome the dynamic friction. And for static, that took six pennies. And that's not a good force measurement. So I'm going to convert that over to, to newtons. And from earlier experiments, I realized that there's 40 pennies per newtons. So if I divide six by 40, I can get that force in newtons. And that comes out to be zero. 0.15 newtons. And I did the same thing for the dynamic friction. And that was four pennies. So again, I do the same math to convert that to newtons. I get 0 0.1 newtons. Now these are my forces. So to simply calculate the coefficient of friction for static uh, situation, I take mu of static is equal to my F, which is 0 0.15 newtons. Divide that by my normal force, which is 3.9 newtons. And that comes out to be 0 0.38, actually 0 0.038. So that's my static coefficient of friction for that cart. Now I do the same math. I take the force, which is 0.1 newtons, dividing it by 3.9 newtons for my normal force, and I get a coefficient of dynamic friction being 0.026. So what you see is a static coefficient of friction is greater than the dynamic, and that makes sense. So now, depending on whatever weight I have on my cart, I can calculate the frictional force by applying these newly calculated coefficients of frictions, knowing the weight of my cart. I can then calculate or anticipate what the friction will be under those circumstances. So that's how we go through the process of determining the coefficient of friction for objects. Okay, so let's put that theory to test. I'm gonna add a 220 gram block to my 400 gram cart and then calculate the force that I think is necessary to break the static friction. So what I have, you know, I have my cart, starts off at 400 grams, 
I add 220 grams to it for a total of 620 grams or 0.62 kilograms. Now I need to have the normal force or the weight of the cart plus a block. So I'm going to convert that to newtons by taking the mass, 0.62 kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, which gives an N of 6.07 newtons or 6.1 newtons. Now I need to go back and calculate the force I think is required. So I use my frictional force equation and I substitute in the values I know. From earlier, I calculated the static coefficient of friction to be 0.038. And then I multiply that by my normal force, 6.07 newtons, and that ends up giving me a force of 0.23 newtons. Now I want to convert that to pennies from my experiment, so I multiply 0.32 by 40 pennies per newton, and that gives me approximately 9.2 pennies. So now I can go over and repeat the experiment one more time, putting in 9 or 10 pennies to see if I can get the cart to start moving. So let's go take a look and see how that works. So back here at the test setup, now I've got my cup preloaded with 9 pennies. You can see the cart's not moving, so let's see if I can add the 10th penny to break the static friction. Sure enough, it works. So my calculation said about 9.2 pennies, and the actual car started moving between 9 and 10 pennies. So it looks like the predictive capability of the equation works. Excellent. Okay, so there you have it. Now I know the coefficient of friction for my carts, and now I can determine the frictional forces associated with these carts as I use them in future experiments so I can compensate and make my results better. Hopefully you learned a little bit about friction and how to calculate it, and I hope to see you next time at Lab Rat Scientific.